Amen. Amen, indeed. Welcome to this house of worship. We welcome you here to O'Fallon First United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Don Long. I'm the senior pastor here, and I am privileged to tell you that today we have the blessed opportunity and privilege to have uh, Pastor Brad, our associate, bring the message uh, to you this morning. So I want to welcome you. If you uh, are a first-time guest with us here, we are so happy that you have chosen to worship with us. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. You can also visit our website. If you're worshiping with us online at home this morning, you can visit there as well at uh, OFFUMC.org. Uh, the easy way to remember it is it's off UMC, <laughs> but it stands for O'Fallon First, OFFUMC.org. Hope that you'll visit with us there. We're working on updating that site and getting some new things there. Uh, for those of you who are uh, worshiping in person with us here this morning, throughout the week, we would invite you, if you would, to remember, if you can, to go to that site, and you can register for worship online. Uh, and you can register yourself as a reoccurring guest. That just helps us. Now, if you're visiting the first time, you don't know to do that, obviously. But for our regulars, if you would, it just helps us keep a count of those who are in-house with us. As you know, uh, the, the, we have some restrictions as far as the numbers that can be in person. Unfortunately, those numbers could be changing uh, as we go forward, just depending on how things continue to progress uh, with the COVID virus. So just be watching, and we'll be sending out information as much as we can. Next Sunday is Christ the King Sunday. Do you know what that means? For those who don't know the calendar, uh, we, we go by a Christian calendar that leads us throughout the year. And so next Sunday is actually our new year. It's the end of the year. We get ready to begin a brand new Christian year that starts with the first Sunday of Advent. And so on the following Sunday, on the 29th, we will have the first Sunday of Advent. And yes, that means Christmas will only be four weeks away. So next Sunday is the last Sunday of our year, and it's Christ the King Sunday. We celebrate that. And it's also a part of our Dedication and Consecration Sunday here at O'Fallon First. So our members, you'll be receiving in the mail this week some information about that if you've not already done so. There's an estimate of your giving for 2021 in there, and you'll be invited to bring those back with you next Sunday, if you would. Tonight we have a Job Bible study that I'll be starting at 6.15, and Pastor Brad is leading a senior high Bible study, and that's at 6 o'clock, Brad. And so you can find information about that. If you want to join the class, and you can do that in person or online, if you want to zoom into that class, just send me an email, and I will make sure you get the invite. And my email address, it's real easy. It's my first name, the initial of my first name, Don. So it's D Long, L O N G. They say a, a name says a lot about a person. Uh, D Long at OFFUMC.org. So send that to us. And I just want to celebrate also this beautiful bouquet of altar flowers that's on the table. That is in celebration of Joe and Bonnie Suggs' 52nd wedding anniversary this week. So just a, a beautiful fall collection. And lastly, as we begin for worship, uh, guys who are up there on the camera, I'm going to give you a heads up on this. I'm going to move. And so if you want to follow me, uh, I'm going to step right down here to these boxes. You may be wondering about those. These are Christmas shoe boxes. They're for the Operation Christmas Child. Uh, many of you have packed these boxes. We had some volunteers who packed these boxes. There are over a, a couple of hundred boxes here, and they are getting ready to go out uh, and be delivered to children for Christmas all over the world. And so we're just going to pause in this moment this morning and offer a blessing upon these boxes. And for the children into whose hands these gifts will be delivered in the coming weeks. So would you pray with me? Let us join together. Loving and most gracious God, you give us the bounty of so many blessings every day. We give back a blessing, God, through these gifts. They are simple gifts, many of the items within these boxes. But in their simplicity, let them represent the depth of your love and our love, God, for one another, especially for the children, into whose hands these boxes will one day be delivered. As they receive these gifts, let them be a symbol uh, of your mercy, of your grace, of your provision, and of all things that are good in life. 
We ask that you would bless the hands that have prepared these boxes, those that through whose hands they will pass as they are processed and delivered, the, the mail carriers and all of those who will fly them to all places all around the world. May they receive your gift of life and love, and may they be reminded, God, that you have called us to serve you by serving one another. So let these gifts go in service to Christ, for it's in his name we pray. Amen. Thank you for that. Let us be called together in worship now this morning. Come with all that you have. For you who grieve this day, know that you are invited to bring the broken pieces of your heart. Loved by one another, we discover God's love for us. Come with all that you have. For you who come with gladness, Know that your melody will find harmony. Accepting God's love for us, we are called to love one another. Come with all you have. For you who come seeking, know that your questions are safe in the presence of God. Loved by one another, we discover God's love for us. Let us pray. God, we remember with wonder and joy that your spirit is reaching everywhere this day, rejoicing in the liveliness of all living things, touching what is wounded and ill and healing with your power, gathering in the lonely, the lost, the least, soothing ancient animosities and creating and reflecting a vision of hope. Come, Holy Spirit. Let our worship rejoice in you and lift our hearts and bind us in one family of loving grace. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The scripture reading on which the message that Pastor Brad brings for us this morning is based on Matthew chapter 28 at the 16th through the 20th verse. If you'd like to find that in your own Bibles or in the Pew Bibles there, you're welcome to do that. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, Matthew 28. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. 
Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded to you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. May God add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of these holy words. Amen. quiet our minds, to help us focus on what it is that you have before us. I ask that you help me move out of the way and allow you to speak. Lord, today is a gift, so help us to recognize the gift and be present in the moment. Lord, it is in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Our purpose as a church is to connect imperfect people to a perfect God. Connecting is part of being influential. And today we're going to talk about how I'm influential in our Amen series. I truly believe that God created us to connect. We see this really all the way back in Genesis chapter 2 with the creation of Eve. As God offered a partner for Adam in that moment, someone that he could connect with intimately on a regular basis. In the same way, we are created to connect today with one another. Let's be honest, though. If you're like me, you're an imperfect person. Our connections are not always great. We don't often think about and recognize the influence we have on others through the connections that we have with them. To take it a step further, I honestly think maybe we need to stop pretending that the things that we do don't have an impact on the other people that we connect with in our lives. The way we respond when someone is talking to us, how we show love and affection to others, the amount of focus we offer in whatever setting we're in, and even the tone of voice or the attention that we pay to other people. What we do matters. And what we say matters, because you are influential people. Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to you. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Jesus has all power and all authority, and he gave this to the disciples to go and to make disciples. So, Jesus could have said, that he would go and make disciples of all nations, right? He could have. But Jesus empowered them to go and to do this as well. Jesus also empowers us with influence today. So why? Why does Jesus need us to be influential? I believe it is because, like we saw in Genesis 2, that we were created for connection. And being influential is one of the ways that we are able to connect with other people. So think about it. Connection takes courage, right? Courage to step out of yourself, courage to have empathy, courage to engage with someone wherever it is that they are, courage to share your authentic, imperfect self with others. But courage also requires vulnerability. In fact, Dr. Brene Brown, a social work professor at the University of Houston and the author of several books, uh, says that based on her research of over 200,000 people, that you cannot be courageous without also being vulnerable. The people that she uh, talked to and worked with, these people included what I would consider to be 
the most courageous people on earth, and that's members of our United States military. Yet they all said it requires vulnerability for them to be courageous in whatever it is that they're doing. So we are made for connection, and that requires courage and vulnerability. Vulnerability is a gift, although often it doesn't really feel like it. That is why we often don't like things like public speaking or being the center of a discussion, because it's hard. I've had many instances in my life where vulnerability hasn't really felt like a gift, but we recognize it, and it truly is a gift from God. To experience true joy, we must be vulnerable. Jesus tells us in John 15 that if we abide in his love, then his joy will be in us and our joy will be complete. To fully experience true joy, we must first be open to experiencing the love of God. And we can only experience that love if we are open and vulnerable in our relationship with Jesus. It's through an intimate connection that we are offered. So, if we are open to living into an intimate relationship with God, that means that we are trusting that God will use our imperfections for good. The same imperfections that with our vulnerability can lead us to experiencing shame, which is actually the fear of disconnection and the opposite of what we are created for. Jesus wants us to live in relationship with him so that we can experience true joy and that we can have joy in our lives and share joy with others. So let's take a step back for a second because I've used a lot of words this morning. I've used influential, connection, courage, vulnerability, joy. That's a lot of things. But there's a reason. Jesus has called us to make disciples, to baptize, and to teach because you are influential people and God has purpose for you today and every day. You have been called. I know that I am influential because my role as pastor and coach and husband and dad. All of those roles come with influence. So it is important for me to know the level of influence that I have in the lives of others. My influence also requires connection, courage, and vulnerability. Recently, I was faced with a situation uh, where on a Sunday morning, I got called uh, by the dispatch center at the O'Fallon Police Department at 4.50 in the morning to go respond to the scene of the death of a 15-year-old girl. I was terrified. I did not know what to do, and I really didn't want to engage in that moment. The family was in shock, they were in pain, and they were in turmoil. I was there to offer them emotional and spiritual support in that moment. There were times when I was there that I had to use my influence. The coroner's office was also there, and they were asking questions, and they were looking into what happened. And there were moments where I had to step in and say, the family needs a break. You need to give them time. Give them a minute so that they can uh, take in what has happened. There were moments that I just had to step in and pray with the family. But I'll tell you, I was terrified. But I was provided with an opportunity to be an influence in a terrible situation. I needed to be courageous and vulnerable with them in that moment. And you know what changed my faith? When I was 16 years old, I experienced the death of a friend. In that trauma, in that pain, there was a man who offered me vulnerability and courage to share the depths of his, his faith in a moment that I was angry and confused as well. He shared what it meant to pray and how he had an intimate relationship with Jesus. He was influential in my life, and he was influential for me in a terrible situation. So Jesus also says to teach them everything that he has commanded. 
That is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So far, just in this commission, he has told us to go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them, and teach them everything that Jesus has commanded. These are all things that require us to have connection, courage, and vulnerability in our lives. But think about this. What if we started to say to people, our spouses and our kids included, you are imperfect, you are broken, and you will struggle mightily in your life, but you are a child of God, and you are worthy of love and belonging today. How different would the world be? Think about it. Right now, because of our desire to not be vulnerable in our lives, we are the most in debt, obese, addicted, and medicated adults in human history because we don't want to share in our vulnerability. We want to numb our vulnerabilities, but in doing so, we are also numbing the joy that God is offering to us. What if we embrace our imperfections and stop, see or, and stop seeking things to fill the voids in our life? What if we could be the vessel that offers true joy to someone else through a relationship with Jesus Christ? What if someone learns that imperfections do not define who they are? But with their worth of love and belonging through an intimate relationship with Jesus, that they can experience true joy. I think it would change the world if we shared those things with people. Before my daughter Olivia was born, Jamie and I were decorating her room and trying to make it this perfect space for a little girl. Jamie made a sign to hang over her bed, and it's still there today. And that sign says, you belong. My little girl is not perfect, and she will not be perfect. She will struggle, but she belongs, and she is loved. One thing I've done every year since I've been here in our student ministry is offered our leaders an opportunity to share their testimony with the students. We have always talked about how the most powerful story ever told is the story of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We also talk about how the second most powerful story anyone will ever hear is the story about how the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ has changed our lives. So when preparing to share these testimonies, we talk about our lives in three specific areas every year. Life before we were in an, an intimate relationship with Jesus. That first time that we experienced an intimate relationship with Jesus and how our life has changed since experiencing that intimate relationship with Jesus. Hearing people like Carolyn Day or Neil James, Angie Kimmel, and dozens others share how their lives have been transformed because their relationship with Jesus is truly incredible. The people that heard these stories, they were blessed because of them. Because these people that shared are influential from their connection, their courage, and their vulnerability. These stories have helped students feel a sense of love and belonging that they need in their lives. These stories often included instances of imperfection, as all of our stories do. But more importantly, each one of these stories, they all include and contain a story of redemption, which we all have in our lives. So I want you to leave today with a challenge. This challenge is something that our students are taking part in as well. We are calling it My Three. I want you to think about three people in your life who are not deeply committed to a relationship with Jesus. Maybe they're in your family. Maybe they're in your Rotary Club or at your gym. Maybe they're in this church or they're completely unchurched. But think about three people that don't have an intimate relationship with Jesus. 
then I want you to do three things for these people. First, I want you to pray for them. You can let them know that you're praying for them, but you don't have to. Next, I want you to care for this person. This is where you let them know that their imperfections and struggles do not define who they are, but they are worthy of love and belonging right now. Maybe it's as simple as buying this person a cup of coffee, or maybe it's just picking up the phone and calling them and telling them that you love them. And then finally, the last thing that I want you to do with these three people is to share your faith story. Let them know how Jesus Christ has changed your life. Share the story of your life before you had an intimate relationship with Jesus. Share the story of the time that you experienced an intimate relationship with Jesus for the first time. And let them know how your life has been changed since experiencing that intimate relationship with Jesus. This challenge is truly about the influence that you have in your life. It will require connection, courage, and vulnerability for each one of us. Not everyone will want to hear how your life has been changed. I can promise you that. Not everyone will be open to experiencing love and belonging. Not everyone will want to be a part of your three. And some moments will be tough. However, Jesus tells us at the end of Matthew 28, he says, and remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. I'm influential and you are influential. It is time for us to use our influence for the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Lord God, we are thankful for the influence that you've offered to us. We are thankful for creating us for connection, for providing us an opportunity to be with others in this broken and sinful world. Lord, we ask today that you can help us to embrace the imperfections that we have and give them over to you. Don't let them be a burden on who we are. And God, we ask that you can keep them from stealing the joy that you have offered to us, true joy that is complete only through you. Lord God, today we lift up our community. We lift up our congregation. As we experience hardship, as we experience joy, as we walk and navigate through a time that we have never experienced before. Lord, we ask that you are with those who are hurting right now, uh, who are suffering from illness, uh, who have experienced hardship in their lives. And God, we give thanks for the joy and the things that we have to celebrate. Things to celebrate like life, new life, families coming together, things, Lord, that we don't always bring to the forefront, but we are excited and we are blessed by those things. God, we also, uh, today, we offer ourselves to you. We offer ourselves to you to take into the world, to be bold and courageous as we step out, as we think about three people in our lives that don't have an intimate relationship with you. Help us to draw closer to them and for them to experience the love, the joy, and the mercy that you can bring to us. Lord, today we are thankful for many things. And we are thankful for the opportunity to pray with one another the prayer that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today, uh, we want to invite you, if you have a gift to share with the congregation, uh, a monetary gift or a, a gift otherwise, we want to invite you to share those. We want to invite you to take the steps in faith today and every day 
to share the, the gifts that God has given to you. If you are here in person, there are offering plates at the back of the sanctuary. And if you're joining us online, uh, there are links online where you can give today as well. Also, at the back of the sanctuary, you will see a whiteboard. That whiteboard says, My Three. On your way out, or if you're with us online and you want to stop by at some point this week and visit that whiteboard, we want you to write the first name or the initials of the three people in your life that you're going to pray for, care for, and share your faith story with. If you can't make it by the church, send us an email in the office, and we'll put those names or initials on that board for you. And then we're going to take time to pray over the names and the people on that board together. Let's pray. God, we thank you and we praise you. And it's in your holy and precious name that we give you these people and these names that we've offered that we want to share with today and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Go now with this blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today and every day. Go now. Amen. Amen.